hello. I'm uh, figure I make a vlog post. I haven't made one for a while. I've been making videos for the website, and uh, I just figured I'd make a vlog post. <clears throat> I've been thinking about uh, the whole idea of uh, you know the advantage of Linux versus proprietary software, you know, free and open source versus proprietary software, because they both have important advantages, you know, and so I'm not really uh, against either one of them. I, I think that uh, the most important thing to me is my private property, you know, uh, in the issue is because I understand how important private property is for, you know, capitalism, you know, it's based on private property. And so when I'm trying to figure out how to create my business, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm interested in owning my own means of production. And um, so, you know, you know, like the whole, I say, I've said many times, the main, what got me started using Linux was reading the Microsoft user agreement. And it said that Microsoft owned the software on my computer and, you know, and I had, couldn't, you know, I had to follow their, you know, they were in control. And I'm like, oh, no, I don't agree to that. And it's been, that's been like 20 years ago, more than 20 years ago, 25 years ago. So I'm thinking about, I remember one time I read this, these articles, you know, one was about IBM was advertising their, uh, what they called knowledge space and they could build a you know like a rack of servers and you could have all your company's business on this you know in this one place right and um, control your whole company with this computer system that they had and then about the same time Sun Microsystems came out with this system called uh, where they they said you could use a hybrid system where you would have a small private system like like IBM's knowledge space combined it with a uh, one on this you know you know software as a service you know and you would just use the the global cloud of artificial intelligence kind of scenario and I've been thinking about how you could actually use that very same strategy in your home office I think is actually the best it's kind of like integrated medicine is the best medicine well integrated software is a good way of strategy for success in your home office and what that means is that your 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 base is going to be your private Linux you know you I would recommend getting your building your home office on your Linux machine but that you would also have either a Windows or or an Apple Macintosh or both you'd have all three you know Linux Microsoft and Apple but one or the other have at least one proprietary because the proprietary software has certain advantages there's no way some home office entrepreneur is going to be able to produce Windows, you know, uh, it's just there's it has a ton of advantages, okay, and from that big billion multi billion dollar corporation just has more resources they can and they got a whole team you know thousands of people working together, and so naturally it's going to be have adv certain advantages, you know you just but I I do recommend creating that that per, that base that central core of your business be free and open source software and and i and you have to you're going to have to work on the security and make sure that you can protect the security i i like the fact that windows apparently they're going they're going all out into the working you know cooperating with linux instead of trying to fight against it like like uh what is that company uh um, Adobe, you know, they won't, their software won't run on Linux, you know, which is dumb as far as I'm concerned. But Windows is going, they're going all out to work with Linux. And that's good. You know, you can actually install Linux on, on Windows 
and work in a Linux environment on the Windows machine. And so that's, that's an interesting thing. I haven't tried it, so I don't know. I just watched a video about it. And if they're doing that, and that that's actually a good thing. So that's kind of the way I'm kind of headed. Right now I'm working full time, so I don't have a lot of time to work on this. So my progress is pretty slow. But uh, it's, you know, that's kind of the way I'm headed. You know, I, I'm right now I, all I really have is a Windows machine. I still have my Linux laptop, but it's got a broken hinge on it, so. I'm kind of, it's not very, you know, I, I, and I just started this new job, so it's going to take me a minute to get every, I finally got caught up on my last big bill that I was behind on, so I'm kind of caught up on my bills, and I'll be able to start investing more money in my business and buying equipment and stuff like that, so we'll see how that goes, and, um, but, uh, yeah, get the, you got to have your your Linux machine because it's you know it, it might even be better to have BSD. I wouldn't mind having a BSD machine, but I've never used BSD. I, I don't know, you know how if it's as good as Linux or anything. I know Linux is fairly common and popular, and a lot of people are using it. So there's a ton, you know, there's tens of thousands of applications you could run on Linux, and um, you know, there's a whole ecosystem um, with Linux that you can use. But I don't really like, it, but the license on Linux is kind of saying that nobody owns the software, which that's not exactly what I want. And, you know, what I want, I want to own the software on my computer. I want to own the software. I want to own everything. You know, my, my computer, it's my computer. I can do whatever I want to with it. And, you know, and I want privacy. And I want to own my computer, and the so including the software on it. And you know, I I'm not the, one of these guys that won't. I, I I don't mind advertising on my. You know, I don't uh, try to. You know, only use free and open source software. You know, I put uh, proprietary software on my computer, but the the base is Linux. It's free and open source software. I'll probably try BSD here at some point, just because I like the, the BSD license better than the, than the, uh, you know, the MIT and the BSD have, have good licenses. There's no limit. You can do whatever you want to with it. The only thing you can't do is not, you can't prevent somebody else from using BSD and you can't sue anybody if it doesn't work the way you want to wanted to you know but you can other than that you can do anything you want to with it and so I may eventually go that way but at this point I, I kind of I'm still you know I've been kind of knocked off my KDE plan just because of the way things are going but that's still a possibility for me to learn that learn C++ and QML and build a a KDE development environment, but uh, if I if I get into using the System seventy six, which I the big advantage of System seventy six is they make hardware, and so you can buy a System seventy six computer with Linux installed on it natively, and so that's that eliminates because the last time it was really hard to get. Linux installed on my la that last laptop. You know they make it their menu. They make it as hard as possible. I finally got it done, but it was it wasn't easy. So if I could buy a laptop with Linux installed on it to be to start with, that'd be a good thing. They use the GNOME environment, and they they've kind of uh, forked off of that, and you know cloned GNOME and made their and they're making their own desktop environment that's based on GNOME and I guess that's okay I mean GNOME was fine I didn't have I don't really have anything against GNOME the only thing I have against GNOME is that it, 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 there's not a lot of the, the, what I like about KDE is there's lots of buttons and the buttons help 
new people that are you know, unfamiliar that are just starting out find their way around there's a button oh that button it kind of there's a little name on it that says that what it does and so it's a little it's quite a bit easier to find your way around kde with gnome you can do everything in gnome gnome is more like it's made by programmers for programmers KDE is made for it so anybody can use it. You don't have to be a programmer to use Linux, you know, KDE. And so they may, it's intentionally designed to be easy to use. And I like that And because I'm not really a programmer. I've never had a job as a programmer. I, did, I was a fire control technician in the Navy, so I, I have some, I've been messing around with computers my whole life. But... I'm not a programmer. I'm not a professional programmer. I'm just a... The main thing is, I, I was, I was a, when I started out, I was a farmer. You know, my first job was farming. And farmers are very independent. You know, they own their business, and they, at least they did back then. Uh, they, they, the government kind of ran all the you know, farmers. You know, they, they, they had the death tax, you know, and so... The farms got bought out by these corporations, which I've heard that they're now they're buying out all the houses. And this is not good, man. You know, private property is a really super important part of free enterprise. Private property and free enterprise, they go together. They, we can't have one without the other. You know, so, you know, own your house, own your means of production. You know, if you if working for a big corporation, because most people are going to work for big corporations, there's nothing wrong with that. But own that corporation. You know, I, I believe that the people who work for corporations should own the company. They should own the stock. You know, they should, in addition to their wages, they should get stock in the company, and and, and their profit sharing system. You know, and um, they should be able to have some influence on the you know, how the company is run and all kinds of things like that you know but um, get your Linux set up you know the way I see my vision right now at this point is you get your your big desktop computer with uh, Linux and you know with at least two or three monitors and, and you're building your system and uh, you build up from, with that you know, I got these accounts with Microsoft Windows, you know, and I'm thinking about upgrading it to Pro, Windows Pro, Windows 10 Pro. And I heard that Windows 11 is about ready to come out, so I may want to get that too. And get a Windows Pro and, and keep it up to date. And, you know, and I got Adobe Creative Cloud on here. And so you got to kind of maintain that don't you know that's not a bad thing i can use that that's and and use it and then you've got your linux your linux is your control you learn c programming and use network programming you know with c and linux and you control learn how to control the, the network and the, you know the uncomplicated firewall you know, UFW, I think, is the name of it. And you learn how to use that. You learn how to use Postgres, SQL. is the most popular, most advanced open source. You know, it's an open source. It's free. It's, it has a BSD license. Or either BSD. I think it's BSD. Because it comes out of the BSD shop, actually. It is where Postgres, SQL comes from. And so you learn the, the Linux and you learn awk. And, and Z shell, I use Z shell, bash was fine, I guess, but uh, you know, when I first started, C Z shell said it did everything that bash does and then some, so I started using that and I've been using it ever since. And you, and you learn awk, which is AWK, is a language that you can use to program Linux, and you learn where your file, learn your file system figure out where your files are and learn how to use to to edit them and get your dot files which is your you know the, your uh, where you control what your programs how they run and everything like that like z shell dot dot z shell rc file is which sets it up 
all the settings on Z shell or Vim, you know, your .vim RC file. I'm gonna get all those set up and, um, and, and learn how to do that and manage it and keep, you know, build your, your, your own private cloud of artificial intelligence. Anyway, I'm over, I'm over my 15 minute time. It's not really a limit, it's just a good idea. You know, 15 minutes seems like a good amount of time to listen to the story. So have a great day and uh, thanks for listening and peace and prosperity be with you.